An airplane is basically a conductor since it's made out of metal. And any conductor that's moving through a magnetic field will have the potential to induce an EMF. And the reason being is because in any conductor there's positive and negative charges and those negative and positive charges are going to be flying with a velocity through a magnetic field and we know that when a positive or a negative charge moves through a magnetic field it experiences a force. So if we use our right hand rule we'll figure out which way the force is acting. Let's look at the wing in particular since that's the largest span that's crossing the field lines. To use our right hand rule we'll imagine the wing consists of tiny little positive and negative charges. So let's put a couple of positives in here and we'll work on that first. The velocity of these charges is the same as the velocity of the plane, so they're moving to the right. Our field lines are into the page, so if you use your second right hand rule, where your fingers go into the page and your thumb points to the right, you see that there's a force acting on these positive charges in the upward direction. So these positive charges will start to flow to the top and end up piling up on this tip of the wing. Similarly, the negative charges will flow in the opposite direction and pile up on this dimension. So because we've separated the charges, we've induced an EMF. All that's left is to calculate its value. The equation is fairly simple for a conductor moving in a magnetic field. It is simply the EMF induced depends on the value of the magnetic field that it's traveling through, the length over which the charges are separating, and the velocity. Now B in this particular case is 5.0 times 10 to the negative 3. The length over which the charges are separating are the length of the wings which is 12.0 and the velocity of the plane itself is what we're trying to figure out. The induced EMF is given. It's 1.5 volts. And if we solve this for V, which gives us the following.